Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got the 2021 Can-Am X3 and we got some goodies for it. What's up, Tim? What do you got in the box? We got a little exhaust going. Who makes that? Evo, right? Evo. So this is the Evo Shocker. And what's cool about the Shocker is it comes with this electric dump valve. So normally your exhaust will exit here, go through the muffler, and then exit through the muffler. When you hit the dump valve, uh, most of the sound will come out of this pipe here and that's pretty much straight pipe you're bypassing the muffler so you're gonna have a very very deep sounding exhaust and that's only when uh you're want to race or you want to you know flex on somebody but uh personally i think it's really cool because if you want to just ride with the family you can run the exhaust through the muffler and then when you're tired of running you know the family in the car and you want to go race your pals and you want to go flex on them then you hit the shocker and the shocker's gonna dump out right about here all right, so first we're gonna start with the uh, passenger side seats because we're gonna have to access the uh, center tunnel to run the wiring for the switch. And then we'll come back to the back here and take off the muffler and followed by the uh, cat. <laughs> All right guys, in the box, you get the uh, pipe itself. Everything's hooked up. The valve is already uh, connected and torqued down. Right here, you get a new banjo clamp that goes onto the turbo, which is nice that they give you because sometimes on a car with higher mileage, you might have issues putting this on or taking it off. So it's nice that they give you a new one. And then right here, it looks to be a very, very simple install when it comes to the, uh, you know, the wiring. Everything's already pre-wired. The switch is pre-wired. It has the connector block on it. You're pretty much gonna hook it up to the power and the ground. And I believe the accessory. We'll know more when we take it apart really nice i'm very impressed with this and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start taking off the seats like i said all right well if you haven't taken a set of these seats off it's really simple there's two bolts and nuts in the front and then in the back there's uh two 18 millimeter nuts and then also if you want or if you have to because uh, some of them have these uh, four point harnesses some of them don't but there's gonna be uh two 18 millimeter nuts at the very top here for the seat belts you want to take those off too once you take the seat towel you're gonna want to remove all the panels from front to back whether you have a 2C or a 4C because you're going to run the wires through the tunnel and um, pretty much follow all the wiring here and find a good switch location. So like we have uh, switches here already and on the other side, we're going to have to find a place for this switch. Not sure where. What are you thinking? I'm thinking right up on top. On here? No, on the other side. Over here? I don't think you can do it right there. Huh? Or else I would have done that already. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll figure out a switch location, uh, but probably we're first going to do the exhaust. So we'll just get these panels off and then we'll move on to the back and take the muffler off. All right, so you're gonna have to remove this rear fascia trim. Really simple, five bolts, and it comes off. Hey, so when you're gonna remove your exhaust, before you start taking off any of the bolts, start taking off the springs first, because if you take off the bolts and the exhaust is move, free to move, you're gonna have a real hard time taking off these springs. Um, pretty much taking off the springs, not that hard. If you have some sort of hook tool like this one, the bigger the better, the more leverage the better, because they are on there pretty tight. And what you're gonna wanna do is go through the loop, and just pull on those suckers as you, as you can see there one already came off so so we got these two off get the other two off then you can move on to taking off your exhaust uh, so the bolts for the exhaust are right here down at the base there's bolts and nuts uh, make sure you use a wrench and be careful you don't drop them down here because they can be a pain to grab even with a magnet it's kind of hard to grab them so be uh, very careful All right, real quick, the uh, ones on the driver's side have a washer and also they're smaller bolts. Just remember that. We got to take off the exhaust now that the bolts are off. We're going to have our my lovely assistant here take that off. Go ahead there, Mr. Uh, CJ. This side's free already. You're pretty much going to have to tilt it, fool. Yeah, tilt it that way. Fucking hit on that bolt right there. Yeah, tilt it this way. You're free. And now you're going to want to tilt it up still more and then kind of don't scratch the frame. You won't be able to see it, but I mean, you don't want to scratch it either way. Keep tilting it. Keep tilting it. There you go. All right, so there's a little bit of struggle there. If you got two people, that's always best. Grab your buddy, tell me you got a 12 pack in the fridge, and he'll come over. Did someone say beer? So we're next we're gonna move on to the uh, cat, uh, the cat pipe. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is probably uh, take off these freaking heat shield here. So there's four tens, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna remove this heat shield, it's gonna come this way. And then uh, we'll take off the banjo clamp off the turbo. To do that, you gotta go from the inside. So let's take this off real quick, real, real fast. Oh, look at that, a blow valve and charge tubes. I wonder what video we did that on. That was the last video, actually. So watch our last video if you wanna know how to do a blow valve from Evo as well. 
um yeah so let's go ahead and take off this uh cat and i think next is gonna be go ahead and take off the wiring harness at the very top over there disconnect it you see it just pull it off in there it's just like a one of those push clips this one right here? yeah just push it all right check it out so we're in the interior of the car the seat's out so i'm sitting here you pretty much just take this panel off and then put it right here on the seat somewhere so it's out of your way um cj go ahead and take off the 10 millimeter that holds the downpipe so on these cars is a banjo clamp and pretty much loosen it up we're gonna have to pry it up a little bit just to uh, get the banjo cam to release and um let's see if we can get it here all right so before we do that i think we're gonna take the seven millimeter that holds this uh, bracket to the pipe and then um we should have a little bit more leverage to uh, wiggle this guy off so now with that loose we should have a little bit of more leverage now take it off. yeah take it off Take the banjo clamp off from around this bracket because that's what holds the pipe now we're gonna have a little bit more leverage but i think still we're gonna want to pry the banjo clamp apart in order to get uh, the banjo clamp off of the turbo there we go and a boy all right that's loose that's very loose we should be good now uh we should be able to take this off but i think that these exhaust baffles might have to come off because they're wrapped around the uh, bracket here how many fucking dudes does it take? All right, just three of us. <laughs> All right, see if he's got it. All right, so now it's off here. Don't lose that uh, ring. We're gonna reuse that. Give me that. Um, go ahead and pull that banjo clamp off because Evo gives us a new one. I'm assuming they want us to use a new one. All right, guys. When it comes to looks, you can tell an obvious difference. Now this is going to change in color with the heat but from the cars that i've seen it doesn't change a whole lot and it still looks really really good compared to the factory exhaust and this is the cat that is no longer going to be used or obviously you can't use it but this one doesn't have one so it's pretty much a honeycomb in there for emissions and um, this one doesn't have one so that means less restriction more power maybe not a whole ton without a tune but i think evil still developing the tunes for the 2021 because the ecu is different so we're going to go ahead and throw this pipe on and um, yeah, should be a pretty nice fitment. Man, what a smart guy. Hey, this uh, oxygen sensor is on there really tight. So uh, when you put a little WD-40 on there, kind of work it back and forth. It's better to uh, spray it down with some lube than trying to, you know, force it, because it might break. But it looks like it's going now. It was really on there tight, huh? Lube's always better. Lube's better, baby. You know what I'm saying? So the welds on this pipe are really nice. You can tell they're nice and TIG welded. Possibly TIG welder, that's what it looks like. And then over here you see some bird shit. Bird shit welds in the factory. Fun fact, did you know that the green stuff in bird shit is bird shit too? All right, we're gonna tighten down the oxygen sensor and then we'll put it back right where it belongs. Well, that's not a sight you see every day. But sometimes it's a must. I don't know, just double checking. All right, put your banjo clamp on the turbo. Something like that, right? Right there. I think this is the best way because I had it flipped around and this was rubbing on the uh, exhaust heat shields here so I think it's better this way and then we'll just tighten it from the top then you grab your exhaust gasket and you're gonna put it on the exhaust itself it's got these little tabs on there that'll keep it in place and then we can go ahead and install the uh, this uh, shocker so oh you fucking ram a lemma ding dong do I put the heat shield back on? no you put it on after full we're gonna go ahead and loosely tighten the uh, banjo clamp just so it doesn't move so much. Then we'll move on to securing the heat shield and the rest of the stuff. Go ahead and tighten down your hose clamps on these heat shields. All right, go ahead and tighten down the banjo clamp inside. All right, make sure the banjo bolt is nice and tight. And um, we're gonna leave off this exhaust shield for now because we're gonna have to route the wiring for the dump valve. All right, when you install this heat shield, you're gonna have to take off the uh, bracket at the very frontmost part of the heat shield in order to slide it on. And after that, you can pretty much just tighten up all the bolts 
and you should be good to go. All right, we line up the exhaust with the shocker, and the only fitment issue I see is actually down here by the exhaust shield. Nothing that a little bit of a pry bar can't fix, and we'll do that a little bit later, but first we're gonna put the springs on that attach the exhaust to the muffler. We're gonna tighten up the banjo clamp on the turbo because I loosened it up, trying to move this and get it to line up correctly, so I suggest doing that. And then um, the bolts for the uh, muffler are already installed as well. So pretty much now it's just installing the springs and finishing this up and then we'll move on to the wiring. Should be pretty simple for you guys from here. Not too bad actually, I like this exhaust. All right, when you're taking these springs on and off, man, you guys better make sure you wear some safety glasses because this can be dangerous. You could lose an eye amongst other things. So be very careful. And there it is, we got all four on. Good stuff, dog, we do that shit fast. All right, well, um, pretty much that's it. Everything's nice and tight. We're gonna move on to uh, reinstalling this cover and then we'll do the electronics. All right guys, check it out. We're gonna have to find the switch location. Uh, we used up these already for lights and we had a section over there that was uh, free, but the stereo shop used it for the stereo. And then right here, the only slot we had, we used for dome lights. So we decided we're gonna put it underneath the glove box here. Make sure wherever you put up your uh, switch at, there's enough uh, wiring reach from wherever you put the location of the switch to the, um, what are these ring terminals that go on the uh, junction block here. So looks like they give you plenty of slack, which is good. We're gonna go ahead and drum all this out to make sure we have enough space for our new switch. All right guys, now that we have our switch there, um, it's pretty simple. You got one connection that goes to that dump valve at the very back, one connection that goes to the uh, switch itself, and then this is gonna go to your uh, fuse block panel that goes right here. All right guys, we went ahead and tested this real quick. Um, everything's wired up. We got the uh, wiring all the way over to the dumb valve. It's actually better to put it on your accessory. And then um, obviously the negative goes to the negative. Don't put it on the, the positive like I just said because um, yeah, it's gonna be on all the time and you don't want that. So if you put it to the accessory, what you're gonna wanna do is actually turn on with a quick touch to wake up the car. Then the switch can be active. Then you can switch it over to on and then turn on the car and then the exhaust valve will be open when you do your cold start. So um, that's the way to do it. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and finish wiring this up. All right, we just finished up all the uh, wiring. We zip tied everything up. So when you wanna do this on a cold start, stick your key in, press it once. Now the valve should be off. Turn the valve on, turn the car on. And then we wanna turn it off because it gets annoying. Alright, we're gonna finish up, put the panels back on, which are those, and then we'll put the seats back in it and we'll take it for a little test drive and uh, see how it sounds. And um, honestly, um, I think it's pretty good exhaust for the money because there's another one that I really, really like, made by Agency Power, but they want like $1,200 for that exhaust. And that does not include a uh, cat delete. So that is actually this portion forward. And it's really, really badass. It looks amazing, but I don't think it's worth the money. Uh, this one for $700 roughly. And uh, we, I think we got it for a little bit less at the, at the, the Glamis. I think they got a 10% off at Glamis. So that helps. Um, if you're gonna buy these parts, always try to get the best price. Buy them when you could get a good deal. So 10% off is 10% off. So uh, fitment wise, like I said, very nice. The welds are very beautiful, um, very quality product. So we're gonna go ahead and do some flybys, do some cold starts, and show you guys what this exhaust is all about. All right, let's do a little startup. So just touch it, touch the key. All right, that should turn it on. All right, that should turn on the ignition. Then we'll go ahead and hit the valve. And we can hear it open. Go ahead and turn it on. Oh, hey, mamma mia. Difference in sound, complete difference. So, turn it back on. Dude, that's a huge difference, huh? All right, give it a couple revs, fool. badass 
All right, check it out. So we've been putting a lot of accessories on this 2021, and so far, what do you think? It looks good, man. The car's looking great. Uh, CJ and Tim put the windshield on and the intrusion bars. We put the doors on on a separate video if you've seen that. Affordable doors. Now we got the exhaust on there and the blow-off valve. It's gonna make a big difference when you're out riding. He's gonna feel a lot safer with the doors on there. He's gonna sound a lot better with the blow-off valve and then the exhaust cut out. Um, also, you feel a little, a little bit safer with the intrusion bars, but maybe in the future, radius rods from LMU TV. So stick around for that, subscribe to the channel, and also possibly uh, some wheels. So we don't know yet. I'm not trying to force this guy to spend more money, but he don't listen to me anyway. So might as well just freaking help his addiction. So let's do the flybys and check it out. sound is very very different and we noticed something what do we notice there cj it's a little bit more throttle responsive feels think a so a little bit lighter i mean i don't know maybe it's just me but that's what it felt see like see the pants feels a little bit lighter huh yeah i think so so i wasn't driving but this fucking car is fast dude <laughs> it is quick so apparently we feel a little bit more throttle response and it makes sense you're getting rid of the cat that's a restriction in the exhaust and uh yeah what a huge difference so thanks for watching guys as always see you guys in the next video and uh peace out Timmy, give me your final verdict. Later, guys. What do you think? Badass? I think it's pretty badass. I think it's fucking badass. Hey, You're not driving a hybrid anymore. It's not a hybrid anymore. It's, it's not quiet. It's check a sick ass sticker work. Sick ass sticker work. Sick ass sticker work. Alright, guys.